Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for March 27th, 2023. Now, we said about a week to a week and a half ago that severe weather was going to start to ramp up. Things are going to be a lot more active here going into the main gist of tornado season. And it has. The past three days have been pretty active. We're going to have a little bit of a break, even though we have some severe weather here today. But towards the end of this week, we've got another batch of showers and thunderstorms that could potentially lead to a severe and maybe even tornado outbreak. Before we get started with the video, please be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all the latest information that we provide here on the channel. We'll start with the day one convective outlook here. From the Storm Prediction Center, we have a 1 out of 5 on the severe weather scale for much of the southeast heading off into the southern United States, the southern plains. We also have a lingering 2 out of 5 on the severe weather scale for portions of southern South Carolina, mainly southern Georgia, as well as southeastern Alabama and the western panhandle of Florida. We also have a 1 out of 5 on the severe weather scale tomorrow. You can see that we have that dark green area over here for the practically the same areas that we were talking about before over here in the deep south heading off into the southeast. And then what we have, which is our main risk for severe weather, we don't have anything for Wednesday. We do have stuff for Thursday, however. We have a 15% chance for severe weather, which is essentially a 2 out of 5 on the severe weather scale here for portions of the central plains. So something to watch out for with that. And then if we shift off over here to Friday, this one's the more significant one. We have a 3 out of 5 on the severe weather scale localized over the Ozarks heading off into the Midwest. This is uh, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, and then portions of uh, the states that are along the Mississippi River heading down towards Greenville, Mississippi. So stuff to watch out for that. And then the surrounding areas also need to watch out for this as well because this is more than likely where or around where that significant severe weather event could potentially be. We'll start with the simulator radar here. Based off of the models, we're looking at the HRRR model. Of course, the time is up in the top left-hand portion of your screen in eastern. You'll see the lingering showers and thunderstorms in the southeast, as well as uh, a few thunderstorms or passing showers in the northeast with some rain and snow possible in some of those areas. Some lingering snow showers in the northern Rockies heading off into the Cascades. And then you also have a bit of some lingering showers and thunderstorms into the central portions of the United States as well. We have a new atmospheric river that you can kind of see already on the left-hand portion of your screen. That'll affect portions of Oregon as well as northern California and even into portions of Washington. And that could potentially bring an abundance of moisture. I mean abundance of moisture creating significant snowfall in the higher elevations and a bunch of flash flooding that is possible for areas in the lower elevations. So you guys know the drill. Turn around, don't drown, don't drive in the flooded roadways because flooded roadways actually appear a lot shallower than they actually are. So something to keep a note of that. We're talking a lot of areas over there on the uh, western portions of the United States. You can see that the rain starts to kind of shift a lot further down towards the south. And you can even see that there is an abundance of scattered showers and thunderstorms across the board over here in much of California. I wouldn't even be surprised if we even saw some rotating showers and thunderstorms, ones that could potentially even produce some brief tornadoes. So something to watch out for with that. But the main issue, once again, is going to be that flash flooding risk. So if you live in a flood prone area, please be weather aware and have an idea as to whether or not you could potentially see some flooding within your area. Pay attention to the warnings as well from the National Weather Service. We also have a bit of a snow system over here in portions of Ontario and Quebec, so watch out. There's going to be some more snow over for you guys. Not expecting any of the areas north of the Great Lakes here of Ontario and Erie to really get a whole lot of it, but just something to watch out for if you guys live over there in those portions of Canada. So now we're going to move on to our wind shear here, which is our 500 millibar wind shear, uh, our jet stream, if you will. Uh, winds that are about six kilometers above ground level, so pretty high up in the sky. A lot of very strong wind shear in the central and eastern portions of the United States, but look at the left-hand part of your screen. You can see a very strong atmospheric river associated with our trough and our low-pressure system that is going to start to march on through into the western portions of the United States. This is going to build up a lot of speed and momentum, and then as you can see as we get to Thursday, this is our first wave of severe weather. 
not as much severe weather or a lot of very strong wind shear across the board in some of these areas but there is some slight to moderate wind shear which is something to kind of make a note of but when we get to friday that's when things start to jump notice the difference between right now so this is uh friday morning thursday night heading off into friday afternoon look at that wind shear here look at our jet stream and our low pressure system that is starting to intensify more and more as it continues to propagate towards the north and east so something to watch out for with that we also have a pretty strong high pressure system right down here in the gulf of mexico which is going to kind of aid to that flow moving through into the central portions of the united states and because of how strong this trough actually is we're going to have dual flow here a lot of moisture that's going to be returning across the board into a lot of the risk areas here I want to move down a little bit more towards the 850 millibar wind shear, which is about one kilometer above ground level. And I want you to kind of see that across the board here on Thursday morning into Thursday afternoon, you see that our wind shear is kind of moderate. It's slight to moderate. I would say moderate across the board and upwards of 30 to 40 knots, maybe even higher than that to closer to 50 knots of wind shear in this area. And then all of a sudden, once you get towards friday i mean you can see how strong that wind shear gets on friday morning we've got very strong wind shear here and upwards of 50 to even 60 i'm seeing 65 knots in some spots get on into friday afternoon and it doesn't really go away because the low pressure system starts to intensify further and further we have still some pretty strong wind shear moderate level of wind shear to maybe even strong amounts of wind shear especially as that goes off into the late afternoon and the evening hours. So there's a good chance that uh, Thursday is going to be more of the appetizer for what Friday could become. So something to watch out for with that as that continues to move about. Now, I want to go back real quickly to the 500 millibar wind shear. So we're going back to our jet stream, and I'm going to show you guys what happens after this. It still goes. It moves on through into the northeast. We could potentially be talking about more severe weather uh, across the extreme eastern portions to the southeastern portions of the United States. I'm not expecting that, to be honest with you. Maybe some snow is possible in the northeast, as well as maybe some scattered showers and thunderstorms and some strong damaging winds. But look at this here towards this weekend. Another atmospheric river moves on through. I'm thinking on Friday night into Saturday morning and into Saturday afternoon. So expect some more precipitation to be possible across some of these areas. We also have a bit of a weak trough here, a weak surface low or a weak upper level low, uh, just a weak low in general that is going to try to develop across the central portions of the United States. So watch out for that. I'm thinking Saturday into Sunday is when we could potentially see some severe weather over here across the central portions of the United States heading off into the southeast. You can see how wind shear continues to kind of intensify a little bit more down here in the southeast. And then look at this, still a heavy streamline of severe uh, wind shear moving on through that is going to continue to aid more and more moisture. Once again, another atmospheric river is going to move on through into the northwest. And then uh, towards the end of this model, which of course, as you get closer and closer to the end of the model, things start to become a little bit more... Uh, I would say uh, up in the air you, it tends to be a little bit more and more inaccurate the further along you go. But we're talking the beginning of April here, and we have another severe weather system that could potentially be possible moving on through. So week by week, there more than likely will be severe weather uh, at some stage of a week between now all the way through until middle of April. So something to watch out for with that. Now watch this guys. Remember when I said that the high pressure and the low pressure is probably gonna aid to an abundance of moisture? Well, look at this here guys. I'm talking Thursday into Friday and you can see that moisture is starting to rush up. It is climbing, climbing fast all the way through. And yep, there is an abundance of moisture that is uh, going to be in this area. Now uh, we'll take a look at Thursday first. It's kind of slight moisture it's slight moisture that is put on through into portions of kansas oklahoma and texas honestly i'm not really expecting too much from thursday but i would also like to see more of the short range models be able to pick up on this first before i can actually make an accurate description so tomorrow we will be making another video updating you guys on what exactly is happening on thursday and of course on friday as you can see that moisture really starts to race up further north and we're talking areas of Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, 
and Illinois that'll be a part of this risk. So this is going to be something to watch out for all the way through thick and thin. Bit of a dry line setup that's going to be forming on the southern end of this. But over here in the triple point, we're talking Iowa, northern Missouri into Illinois, uh, maybe even central Missouri, as well as extreme eastern Kansas could potentially be the threat for some tornadoes, uh, potentially even um, some uh, really interesting and very strong supercells uh, that could produce some large hail and maybe some strong damaging winds as well. So we will watch out for this as this continues to move on through and uh, get closer and closer to Friday. Just to kind of hammer this last bit home, uh, just to show you where these thunderstorms are, we're going to look at the instantaneous flash rate and kind of show you how all this kind of comes together. So look at this. Thursday... Once again, not really as many showers and thunderstorms that form across the area. Uh, not really all too significant, but they are sporadic, so they are something that we probably would have to watch out for. Going off into Thursday night and into Friday morning, big warm frontal activity that is uh, expected to develop over here in Nebraska and Iowa. So watch out for that. Maybe some overnight, uh, an overnight threat is possible for severe weather. Elevated hailers is always a possible option, as well as some damaging winds. May not be as much of a tornado threat over there with that warm front, though. As this continues to build on through into Friday afternoon, well, things are a lot different. You can clearly see this area over here, this corridor of uh, significant lightning across the board. Of course, thunderstorms are associated with lightning, so you know, lightning doesn't just happen out of nowhere in some instances. It's got to have a trigger. In this instance, the trigger is your showers and thunderstorms. And you can see it is pretty widespread here in the early afternoon. And once you get into the late afternoon, it continues to be the case, but it also extends further and further north and becomes a lot more widespread the further north you go. So uh, this is going to be really interesting, a very widespread event. We're talking numerous states that are going to be impacted instead of just two, three, or four. Uh, we're talking a good eight or nine states that are going to be impacted by this big event here so watch out for that Friday. There's a good chance that we probably will be live streaming for that one. So please be sure, if you haven't already, subscribe and hit that bell right next to it. All right, hit that notification bell. That way you may be able to stay up to date with all the latest information that we will provide. We're going to try not to provide a significant amount of hype to you know prevent a lot of fear from this. We're going to try and give you honest information as to what's going on. And hopefully you guys, by the time we get to this event, you guys will know exactly what is going to be happening. So watch out for that. Continue to stay up to date with the channel. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications. Share this with friends and family and on social media. Also follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. I have a Discord server. Go join that too. Uh, we got a camera map there that is available for our subscribers of our Discord server. And so if you want more information on that, please be sure to join that. And yeah, stay safe, everyone. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace out.